Hey guys, and welcome, and welcome to Viewing a Brew with Gaz. Today I'll be painting a Viking shield maiden. Lagatha, Queen of Norway, is thought to have been the legendary Viking shield maiden. Now well known as a main character of TV show Vikings, we find her in miniature form bearing an axe and shield. I plan to use the TV show as a guide for my colour selection. The first paint I plan on using is Citadel Colour Contrast Wildwood. I'll be using it in a number of areas, on the boots, trousers, belt, parts of the chainmail, the bracer on the forearm, the axe handle and the inner part of the shield. I'm keeping the amount on the brush quite small and just pushing it around trying to make sure that I cross it into all the recesses to let the contrast do its work. The inner face of the shield has lots of detail, showing off a good wood grain. So to try and remain consistent in how that part is lit, I started at the top of the shield and worked my way to the bottom. Careful not to go too far over the edges, which I would then have to correct later. Once I got the initial layer down, I then ran the brush again over the top part, removing any excess, and brought the shadows further down. You can just about see the details showing in the highlights that are already achieved through the zenithal and this single layer. Carrying on round the model, we've achieved the brown on the trousers, the axe handle, the bracer, the boots and the inside of the shield. Running along the centre axes of the model, there is a belt with a small buckle on. I changed down to a smaller brush size for this area, just for ease of use and accuracy. Finally, we come to the chainmail vest, which has some leather portions on it, around the chest area, as well as over the shoulders and around the neck. Before moving on, we do a final check of the model. Normally I rotate it 360 and I tilt it so that I can see angles and the underside any missed areas. While you have the paint on the palette, this is a good habit to get into and will save frustration later. For the underside of the skirt, I decided to go with the Citadel Colour Contrast Fleshed Hair as Red. This had some nice muted tones and would work well as a shadowed red. Wary of the narrow angles and the small areas to paint, I decided to use my small brush. I slowly worked around the miniature, making sure to cover as much as possible, but without encroaching onto what would be the blue side of the skirt later on. For the outer side of the skirt, we're going to use Citadel Colour Contrast Levide on Blue. Again, this keeps a muted tone and will be a good start point. With this outer area easier to get to, I revert back to a larger brush. I try not to overload the amount of contrast that I have on the brush. I also try to keep my strokes consistent single ones from top to bottom, allowing the contrast paint to pool where it will. In an effort to keep the colours going in the right direction, and for the contrast to sit in a natural place, I try not to go over the same area twice. This can be done to darken down the final colour, but at this time, I just want a single pass. For the metal components, I decided to start with Citadel Colour Contrast Basilicanum Grey, basically just off black. It's often a good base to start from when trying to do non-metallic metal. The chainmail the miniature's wearing means that I don't have to do the single long strokes. With such a rough surface and lots of pockets to fill, just moving the contrast around to make sure it fills every hole is more important than achieving a single brushed layer. With the chainmail section complete, I move on to the shield. 
On the inner part of the shield, there is a metal clasp section running from top to bottom. Using the small brush, I am careful just to touch this area and not get any onto the wood that I had already painted earlier. On the outer part of the shield, there is a central boss, as well as a couple of rivets and metal plates. To begin the skin, I'll be using Citadel Colour Contrast Gulliman Flesh, or Gulliman Flesh, depending how you read it. I always try to start with one of the extremities rather than the face, as it's much easier to repair any problems I have. With a comfortable amount on the brush, I steadily apply first to one hand, and then switch across to the other hand that's holding the shield. As this is very thin in a form of pigment, with it wanting to go into the recesses, you can see I can stick with a larger brush, while still being quite neat. When it comes to doing the face, I am very aware of not putting on too much, as this can cause heavy staining. If you wish your contrast to remain fluid for longer, try adding some of the medium. Whilst it lightens the tones, the pigment levels stay pretty much the same. Even with the larger brush, I am taking some care, not going fully towards where the hair is. Once I am confident in what I have done, I then go back in with the smaller brush to add a second layer once the first layer is dried. When adding this layer, I concentrate on where I believe the shade should be. So as I do this, I'm putting extra layers in the areas of the eyes, around the nose, the lip, top and bottom. If needed, I will also go back in and touch the center of the ears, and maybe around the throat. At the end, this may look a little rough, but the shadows are all in the right places, and we still have another layer to go so I'm not too worried about it. For the shield, I decided to go with Citadel Colour Contrast Achelian Green. Now, there's a number of references in the TV series to a colour very similar to this, and to carry the theme forward into Lagatha herself, we brought it into the sleeve she was wearing, a hair tie, and the wrap on her axe. I laid a couple of lines onto the shield surface using this colour, to give me points of references to replicate the black markings that will go over this colour in line with what was in the series. Once I put these initial reference lines on, I then move to paint over the rest of the shield. The good thing about the contrast is, although those lines will shine through, the black that goes over will cover them. On this surface, which has a high level of detail, contrasts really begin to come into their own, as you can see. They sit within the recesses quite easily. And as you manipulate to move the contrast around the shield's bottom and top edges, it really settles in nicely. If you wanted to, you could do some extra layers lower down, which is what I did on the initial phase. To tie in the shield to the rest of the miniature, I want to do some other colours. So, we went with her sleeves, which is on the undershirt beneath the chainmail. The good thing about doing the sleeves is it will really help pull the model together. As a small accent, I also went to do the hair bobble. As a blonde lady, this blue will make a nice contrasting colour to her light hair. On the axe, there was a crisscrossed wrap running its length. Again, this being the opposite side of the model, it's a great way to tie in all the way across, front and back, with the colour that's on the shield. For the design of the shield and the edging around it, I decided to use Citadel Colour Contrast Black Templar. This is a really versatile colour and is often used on black metals. Using the points of reference I established earlier for the thickness of the black lines and a rough approximation of where I wanted them, I took up my small brush and began to form the centre of each one. With the central lines established, I then transitioned to the 45 degree angled ones. I wanted a variety in the thickness of each one, as well as a slight change in the angle. I wanted it to look like it had been painted, that it was natural. With the markings of the shield roughed out, I then transitioned to the shield's rim. For this I broke it down into the three sides, carefully using the edge of my brush rather than the tip. The hair would be what I would tackle next, and for this I used Citadel Layer Dawn Yellow, one that's very pale and in camera looks almost white. This would give me a good foundation of which to work an ink over. With a large brush, I now begin to fill in the area of the hair, careful to stay away from the leading edge, where I could easily encroach up onto the skin. Once happy with initial layers, I then transition to a smaller brush. 
This completes the base colors for the model using a mixture of contrast and layer. I find that this is quite a good standard if you wanted to get the model out quickly and leaves you in a place where you can come back to add details, highlights and any other things to enhance its look. To highlight the shield in the other blue areas, I chose Citadel Layer Baharath Blue. This is quite a light blue and I think would make a good contrasting colour. I began by using it to highlight the strapping up on the axe. This worked really nicely and was an easy place to repair if it hadn't to be in the correct colour. After that, I transitioned to the sleeves, starting again in an area that I could easily repair. Once happy, I transitioned to the other arm, making sure to try and keep some of the contours of the musculature. With that done, I moved on to the headband. Finally, I came to the shield. With this having a lot of surface area, I started low down with a thin down layer. This would allow it to be a darker shade than what would eventually be the pure layers I would put higher up. Having carried that out, I continue to build each highlight. I think it's important that you take your time with this, as you want that rough look that the wood would have given as the paint was light and dark in different areas due to weathering and the use in battle. Happy with where I was up to, I then looked to do a harsher edge highlight. I did this on the upper edge of each section of the shield, stopping when I reached around halfway to get a feel for how it looked. Taking a final moment, I look up and down the shield to make sure the light and the contours are all highlighted well. I'm happy with the results. Moving on to the highlight of the Wildwood, I chose Citadel Layer Gothar Brown. I find that some of the layer colours make a really nice single layer highlight on specific contrast paints. And for Wildwood, this is the one for me. I decided to start down at the boots, the, one of the lowest parts of the model, and then gradually work my way up. You can see the Gothar Brown goes on really nicely, and looks like a good highlight really. Next I moved on to the axe. I did a top edge highlight, as the main body of it was broken up by the wrapping. After that, I moved on to the trousers. I wanted to leave the front boot for the last, as there was some obvious staining at the top of it that I would need to blend out. With the trousers finished, let's get onto that boot. So again, working up from the bottom to give me a better idea of how much I need to put on, I gradually removed the excess from the brush and worked my way towards that dark area. Once there, as it is a, almost a shadow point, I then can control better how much of the paint to put on. The bracer was an easy access point, it was already quite well lit, as with little contours on it it's a smooth surface, so a front edge highlight was just enough. Not forgetting those leather areas upon the chainmail, I just dressed out some edge highlights and a bit of feathering here and there, to give it some form of lighting. The belt being a centre point and a horizontal line, I wanted a strong colour, something that would stand out. The shield itself we kind of did the same way as we did the blue side, but with it already having a good level of detail, I concentrated initially on the edge highlights of each section of the shield. Having looked in and seen that that had worked really well, I still wanted to do a little more. So I went back in with the brush, with a little amount of paint on that had been thinned down, and just made sure that I had some nice lines to add to the grain work that was already there. To further accentuate the woodwork, I decided to go with the Citadel Shade Rikon Flesh Shade. I was going to use this just to darken down some areas, and give it 
more of a natural look from light to dark. I started with the axe handle, just working along the underside, first from the rear, then from the front, and then by rotating the model to get fully underneath. Next was the bracer. This is a large smooth area, notorious for struggling when it comes to contrasts. So having the flesh shade really helped out. The boots were easy to attack. Plenty of dark spots, lots of lower edges. They also had some really nice contours. So pushing the flesh shade into these areas was quite easy. In the same way of the boots, the trousers had some nice creases as well and there were some obvious shadows based on the inside of the legs and up towards the hips. The laced area at the front had taken quite a bit of the paint and not held a lot of the contrast, so the flesh shade helped bring these back to life. At the rear we just clearly defined the lines of the belt again. On the shield along the panel sections I added some of the flesh shade to the lower half of each section and then ran it parallel to the metal brace. It finished out quite well. I wanted a bit more depth to the skirt, so chose to use Citadel Shade Drakenhof Night Shade. With a single layer of this, I figured I would increase the shadows, give me something as a deeper layer to work from. I just applied a single layer, moving it around, having thinned it down with a bit of water. I was paying attention to where I was painting so that I didn't transition into any areas that I already had paint on. To add a lighter tone to the skirt, I decided to put on a Citadel layer Alatoic Blue. At this point I was still using a large brush as the edge of the skirt is actually raised and has some blocked out details running along the lower edge. Lots of edges in there, eh? After finishing the edge work, I then thinned down the blue and did a light, almost dry brush across the other areas of the skirt. I increased it in certain places just to give it more depth. It came out quite well. The hair, being almost white in shot, actually is a very pale yellow. So I went back to the Reichlin Flesh Shade to add a darker tone and put some of the ink into the recesses as a contrasting colour. Next up, I'll be using Citadel Layer Eshing Grey. The plan with this is to go over a lot of the metal work. I'm looking to do the edge of the shield, the boss in its centre, the axe, and some other areas. Here I use the edge of the brush just to start the grey. I quickly move on to the boss of the shield. Careful to try and keep it on the upper half to give it a natural highlight based on the light point. This is almost going to be a non-metallic metal. As a counterpoint, as you can see, the bottom of the center boss is still dark, so I highlight the lower edge to increase the contrast between the two. I continue to lighten the metalwork with Citadel Layer Dawnstone. In the same way I used it initially, I now, in a smaller area, apply the lighter color. I aim to basically reinforce what we had just done with the Eshing Grey. As you can see, I don't need anywhere near as much as I did on the first pass. Having completed the shield, we now go back to that chainmail. I look at using vertical sweeps, making sure to catch the edge at the bottom, but also some of the links above. Having finished the back, we move round to the front and apply the same method, but concentrate a little more on the upper part of the torso. For the first stage of the eyes, I like to use Citadel Layer Pallid Witch Flesh. This is not quite a full white and has some pigment to it from another colour, but it's a great start point and easier to repair than a pure white. 
carefully with my small brush, I now try and block out the areas of the eyes. The next stage for me when painting the eyes is the Citadel Shade Carolberg Crimson. I like to thin this down and then apply a quick layer. It sits around the edge of the eye point, giving that red look that makes it look a bit more natural than just doing light and dark colours. So this has been heavily thinned, probably around 50-50 with water. All I'm looking to do is establish here the eye's edges. We will repair the rest as we go on. For the pupils of the eyes, I'll be using Citadel Shade Norm Oil. I really like this for this process and find it a lot better than using black. Moving on to the skin tones, I like to use Citadel Layer Kislev Flesh for the final highlight. I thin this down with water and apply it in various layers, waiting for each one to dry before moving on to the next, and will suit the skin tones of this model really well. As an easy start point, I look at doing the shield hand first. This area has a good level of access and will allow me to see if the colour sits well or not against the rest of the colours that I have already painted. I do want the skin to be reasonably pale, but I don't want the skin to be too light in comparison to the dark tones we have used on the rest of the miniature. On the opposite hand, I start with the knuckles, just lightening them up to give me a good point of reference. From there, we build the lighting further, gradually adding layers to increase the lightness of the skin. On the face, I like to start the chin. Again, it's one of those places that's easy to repair and can hide a lot of imperfections if needed. Working my way up the side, I gradually fill in the cheekbone area. As you can see at this point, the eye looks larger than it should. Switching to the opposite side, I apply the same methods. You can see us gradually shaping up the cheeks. Over the course of the next few clips, you will see me gradually building layers and shaping out different areas. This is just a process that you keep up until you're happy with where you're at. Once happy, I actually go back in and darken down with some Reichland shade, heavily thinned down. I do it on the neck, around the base of the hands where it would be shadowed in between the fingers and other areas. It's actually a good way of controlling your lightness and darkness in the miniature. I feel it keen that you should always go around the edges of the nose. I also like to do some light sideburns. Although the hair is not going to be blonde, it would be the wispy darkness that the Rikon Flesh Shade works really well for. With the shadows finished, I change my attention to the axe head with the Basilicanum Grey. I work to establish a shadow at the top and bottom, giving me a light point in the centre. I then apply a second layer. Finally, I do a third layer on the leading edge of the axe. Once done, I go back to Eshing Grey, and just establish a clear line. From there we continue to build, mixing the Eshing Grey with some of the Dawnstone. This is a slow process, but can be worth it in the end if you get it right. I then go back in with some of the Eshing Grey from the top, darkening down making sure I haven't gone too far into the shadows. With pure Dawnstone, I now do the edges of the blade to give me a clear definition of what I'm looking at. Another layer of pure Dawnstone helps me highlight the leading edge. Now with a small amount of known oil, I darken down the tip of the blade to give me more shadow.
with a final very thin layer of the known oil watered down, I just go over the centre light point to blend the two parts together. I really enjoyed painting this Viking shield maiden. It challenged me in a number of ways, and I was very pleased with how it's finally turned out. The muted tones across the majority of the model, in contrast to the bright shield, the skin and the hair, really set off this character. I'm really looking forward to taking on the next one, which is another Viking warrior, but this time a male. Thanks for joining me today for this episode. If you want to see more of the team's content, why not like, subscribe and hit that bell. As for me, I guess it's time to grab a fresh cup of tea. But more importantly, keep painting those minis guys, and we'll see you in the next one.